Welcome to day 333 of our DC journey, 333. I'm Ed Krasenstein here, my twin brother, Brian, and we have a very special guest with us today. You know him as MP3 on DSO. He's an OG. He's also the creator of Name Trade, which is a service that lets you buy and sell DSO usernames. And we're going to talk a lot about that after we go through some of the news. How's it going, MP3? Good. Good to see you guys. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah, we got to meet you in Miami back in, I guess it was May. Uh, had a good time in Miami, and I'm sure we'll see you in LA since you live out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good times, right? Yeah, so there's a ton of news today. There's some really cool stuff to talk about. Uh, Diso's Got Talent by Bad Santa. So I just got the five finalists sent to me right here. I'm going to open the envelope and announce the five finalists from Diso's Got Talent by Bad Santa. Now, these five finalists win $100 a piece, and they move to the final round where the winner of that round is going to win $500. So as you see, I got the names written right here, and I'm going to read them off. Ryan Elf, Fantastic Woman, Goldberry, Oh La La, and William Laurent are the finalists for Diso's Got Talent. There you go. We each get $100. Yes, Brian's going to be personally sending that those $100 bills out to you today. No, actually, Brian's not going to do it. Bad Santa's going to be, and Tiny Elf are going to be doing it. It's going to be coming with your coal this year for Christmas. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so like I said, they all get $100, and the finalists, the final winner will get $500. So they all have a chance for that. The final round theme is Metaverse 2122. So what's Ooh, the metaverse cool. going to be like in a hundred years from now? Maybe it'll be like what, what we're living in right now. Maybe I we are we're the metaverse. Hooked up to Neuralinks. We're going to be up, hooked up to Neuralinks and just that's going to be the metaverse. Like it's maybe all this inside is the our metaverse, head. 2122. And like uh, maybe. maybe MP3 is actually controlling me right now. You know, it works for me because I've been trying to convince people since I joined that I'm a bot. So this would just kind of go along, <laughs> Make sense. Go along with that. Yeah. I'm just a compressed audio file. That's it. <laughs> stop making me hit myself. Can you stop that, please? <laughs> okay. So let, let's get on. So yesterday, Dow Dow, the Dow Dow mystery popped up on DSO. This happened yesterday, late afternoon, Eastern time. Many people noticed the account Dow Dow was on DSO. And at first it seemed like kind of scammy, like, okay, this account's trying to sell some NFTs and- For like $100,000, right? <laughs> $100, yeah, which, you know, that screams scam, right? But it turns out that it, it appears to be legitimate and it appears to be from the core team. So the account was actually created and then they had NFTs up and then that account like vanished and a new account came up with the same name. I think they changed the format of the NFTs around a little bit the pricing. At first it was, you're getting get, you're going to get DAO tokens, a certain amount of DAO tokens if you bought the NFT, but then they change it to you get a certain amount of DSO worth of those tokens. But ZN Need and several others on Chainsurf, I know MP3, you were taking part in that discussion as well, started digging around and ended up getting into a website. And they have a password protected website that actually shows DAO DAO. And it links back to the Dow Dow DSO account, a Dow Dow Twitter account, and a Dow Dow Discord, which according to Careerin is run by Natter, the account that Natter uses for the DSO Foundation Discord. So it appears, um, wow. it appears to be legitimate. Um, I also I went to the website DowDow.io, which is listed on DSO account. And it, on the website it says nothing you see here. But I added forward slash index.php on the end, a trick I learned from some other things I did in the past. Eddie used to be a hacker. <laughs> no, Black hat, of course. So, so I typed index.php and then it took me to a website where you could sign up in, with an email address. And I signed up with an email address and I got an email and it gave me a link, gave me a link to another website, which was, let me see if I have, have it up here still. Anyhow, it gave me a link to another website, dowdow.io forward slash mint dash NFT. And it took me to this page where you could buy the NFTs and explains the NFTs. So between that and the page that Z and Mead and the team over there found on Chainsurf, it appears to be legitimate. 
And according to the website, the launch is going to be in about 37 days from now. Uh, so what is DAO DAO? That's the question. Yeah, so it, it, it appears to be this, I assume it's going to be a node that's going to allow people to create and govern a DAO on their own. And it appears to be like a way to streamline the DAO creation, DAO management process, unlike any chain has ever done before. The interesting thing is that it doesn't really mention D so much, but you can tell that it's built on the DSO blockchain based on what they're saying with the integration of social and the integration of all this other, all the other features that, that DSO has. Um, I, I think this could be a really big idea. I think it could be one of the possible killer apps that can really drive a lot of people to DSO if this, if it is what we think it is. And, and I say this because if, if there's a single DAO I know, we, I know Nader said this, if there's a single app that can drive a million people, DSO blows up. But what if there's a single DAO that can drive tens of thousands of people? That's going to also provide, make DSO expand and blow up. So I think this is like such a great idea. Uh, just how much core, the core team is involved, uh, I, I'll leave that to your imagination and, and check out the clues out there, I guess. But uh, I, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, MP3, I know you were like in that chain surf last night when all this was going down. Yeah. You know, my, uh, my initial reaction was scam, 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 red flag, uh, because you just see someone mint a thousand copies of an NFT marked at 100K each, and it's just like no announcements, no warning, nothing. So my initial reaction was that uh, I've dialed back a bit. I'm, I'm open. Uh, to seeing what's going on. I'm personally not going to buy any of those tickets uh, until I see some more confirmation. But it seems as time goes on and things play out here, it's looking more legitimate. Um, there were some initial concerns. It's interesting because it's like, you know, whatever, however you see it or view it, obviously we'll know probably later today or tomorrow. But um, it's definitely one of the more exciting things that have happened as of recently for DSO uh, as a community and as a chain. And it's just cool to see uh, something like this happened, you know, there's that, I was telling Ed right before, there's like that level of mystery and excitement, kind of how there was in the early days of DSO and BitCloud. So it's like, uh, if it's not a scam, this is really genius and it's really exciting. And like you guys said, I had a question. I wonder, do you think this is what Alex was talking about when he was saying like he has tried a new app or node or something remember he was kind of hinting at some stuff it's not like we'll know but it's like i wonder if this is kind of what yeah. they've been hinting i don't know maybe it's very possible what it was so, so I'll, I'll explain what dow dow is i read the white paper the white papers or i guess they call it a one pager but it's it's about six or seven pages long uh it's on the website and i'll read you i'll, I'll not read you but i'll explain to you what what it exactly is and then we can kind of discuss so DAO DAO is essentially a DAO for creating DAOs. It's a platform for, for DAOs to be created, to be governed, to be traded, but it's also a DAO, so it's decentralized. Here is going to allow anyone to mint a coin or an NFT to raise funds. The founder could take a percentage if they want. So you could say, okay, all, I'm going to take 5% of all the funds that are raised for me being the founder of this DAO. You don't have to, it's just an option. Uh, the way the founder has, the, it's gonna give the founder more control that way because you know, if you're the founder, you're gonna wanna own more of it. And you can do that by putting a founder reward essentially on the, on the buys. So like if I start one, I wanna have a lot of control. So I wanna, as people buy tokens, I wanna take five or 10% for myself so that I, I maintain control. Or I mean, not control, but more control, I guess. What's interesting is the way that, that you're going to be able to invest using US dollar, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Solana, USDC, and pretty much any cryptocurrency. And this is huge because up until now, DAO, the majority of DAOs, the vast majority of DAOs have been limited to only selling coins or tokens in that DAO through Ethereum. Now you can use US dollars. And also the treasuries can be kept in any currency. So maybe you don't want to keep the treasury in Ethereum because you're afraid, what if there's a crypto crash and you know, Ethereum halves? Then the DAO loses half of its treasury and 
we can't we can't take part in this project that we thought we could because now we only have half the amount of money that we thought we had. So you hold it in USDC or US dollar so that it's more of a static price. Like you don't, you don't lose value. Um, so I, I think that's a really good thing. They're going to be one click DAO. It's going to be super easy to create a DAO. You make that, you come up with your idea, type in the text, explain your DAO, make that one click, and then you can start selling DAO coins or NFTs that essentially provide ownership in that DAO. Uh, DAO DAO founders can also set a referral percentage. So like, say I refer MP3 here and he signs up to a certain DAO, I can get 5% or 10% just for referring him. And if, if say he signs up without a referral, instead of going to me, it will go to the founder or go back, or it could go back into the DAO. So that's a really cool way of doing it. Now, the other really interesting thing is there's going to be a decentralized DAO swap. It's called DAO swap. It's a decentralized on-chain order book exchange. So let's say I buy MP3 DAO and, you know, after a while I'm like, okay, I don't, I think I can make some money by selling this. I could sell it for US dollars, or maybe I want to trade it for Natter DAO. Natter comes up with this really cool idea. I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to just trade this for Natter DAO. And I can, that can all take place on chain through DAO swap is what they're calling it. Do you like that, that idea guys? Yeah, I, I think that I think that it has all the aspects that can really take something viral. And you, you have the referrals, you just have the idea of like a really creative DAO could pop up to, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe there'll be a DAO to maybe, I, I don't know. I mean, there's a million ideas running through my head, but one DAO that takes off, and then you have these referrals where you can refer people to the DAO and earn commission. I think that they're really onto something. I think that this could drive a tremendous amount of traffic. Of course, we have to see exactly what happens and how it plays out. Uh, the timer says like 37 days left. So in 37 days, I guess we'll find out. Uh, I, I think we also need to see exactly who's behind it. Um, indications point to people within the core team, according to what's been posted publicly. But I, I think I think it has a lot of potential. And, and it's obviously away from that core those core ideas that the team had in the beginning, they kind of shifted some focus to this, if it is from the core team. Uh, but it might be a good thing. And, and even if it isn't the core team, I think this is a tremendous way to utilize the DAO tokens on DSO. Uh, and I, I, I don't know, I'm just speechless other than that. How about you, MP3? Yeah, what are, what are your thoughts? Do you like the exchange, the idea of this exchange? You know, guys, to be honest, I think this is the surprise we didn't know we needed uh, as a community. This, I think if I could formulate an idea of like, what's the next move from the core team, I never would have guessed this. Um, I'm, I'm sure some people had some ideas, but it's just like to see this type of rollout, uh, assuming that it is them, I really like it. It's bringing some of the excitement back. And I think the, the idea of what it is, being this uh, DAO exchange that's also a DAO, um, you know, obviously DAO has been a big buzzword, uh, not only just this year and inside the DSO community, but just in the broader crypto community as well. It seems like this year it's year of the DAO. Um, and this kind of is just falling suit with that. So I'm really interested to see where that goes. Like you said, the use cases and some of the ideas that people have, it's really limitless. I mean, it depends on just how you want to go about it. And even though we've had these DAO coins, we've really been waiting for this, this element to come out, uh, with a rollout or something to pair it and really give us almost like a, a proof of concept or like an example of like how to go about it. So I think this kind of sets the stage for that and allows people to uh, enables people to be able to, to actually use it. And maybe there's going to be some uh, smart services that support that coming in the next 30 days or so. Uh, like you said, the timer is a little ways out. Um, it's that 30 plus days, but that's good because that gives room for uh, some waves of rollouts here in the next couple of weeks leading up to it, if, if possible. Uh, so that's what I'm expecting. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Uh, I probably haven't been this excited about something DSO related uh, since even before the Dow coins themselves, you know, because we got the Dow coins and there, it was just kind of like, okay, great. Yeah, we have Dow coins. Um, but now with this exchange, we're starting to see the fuller picture and the bigger picture behind it. And you know what, I, I do have to say, I really like that the core team, if this is them, uh, kind of stepping out and taking the first step into the DAO space, because I know that's something that's been talked about with foundation and stuff like that, whether or not this is like 
them turning into that or if this is just a project that they're endorsing uh, through someone else or themselves. I still think it's a great idea. And one thing I did want to add too was uh, our boy Brutal or Brutal, however you say it, he did make a good point uh, in Chainsurf where he said, we need more traders. And I agree. Um, a lot of the action and volume and activity of Disto is trading. And I think you know, how you said how the website's advertising that it's going to be incorporating ETH and Bitcoin, all these other things. Great. Makes so sense. We need, we need so much more exposure to these other crypto yeah. assets. And I think that's the great way to do it. And it seems like a way to invest without necessarily investing directly in DSO. Exactly. And it's just yeah. going to be the inflow and outflow. So I'm excited to see what happens. Uh, I'm going to keep my eyes peeled. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah, like some... if you're investing with Ethereum, then that means you're probably really buying DSO to do that. So you know, what were you going to say, Brian? Yeah, you know, something interesting to point out is that those NFTs, those like pre-buy to buy into the Dow Dow, uh, Dow, the Dow Dow Dow, uh, they've sold 20 of the $100 NFTs. Uh, they sold one of the $100,000 NFTs to an account called Nick Cage. And they sold one of the, uh, I think it's $1,000 NFTs to Nick Cage also. So it's interesting. And a lot of the people buying the $100 ones are BitCloud OGs. So I think that adds some weight to the, uh, I guess, the whole theory that this is a big project. So there's so much more to talk about with these Dow Dow. So let's, let's get moving on with that. Dow voting is going to be a feature on Dow Dow. So those who own a Dow coin are going to be a vote on chain through Dow Dow.io. So, you know, if you, you, st you start the Dow and you want to say, okay, it's time for a community vote, it's going to be super easy to vote because everybody has their identity stored on chain. It's linked to a DAO coin that they own in that DAO, and it's going to be linked to a vote. So I think that's awesome. Uh, votes are stored on chain, identities on chain, so all the social features are on chain, obviously, because DSO allows for it. So virtually everything with these DAOs are going to be on chain. And that's something we haven't seen with other DAOs. You know, a lot of this stuff takes place on Discord. So communications can be lost, it can be deleted. But on the on chain, they can't be deleted. So it's stored forever. There's a history, there's proof that. You know, I voted this way, I own this coin, you know, so legal, there's going to be a lot of legality issues, but everything's backed up. So you have proof of everything. Something uh, quick to mention really quick here is, because uh, I know we want to move on. Yeah. We, if you look at the website, kind of going on with what you're saying, it says, yes, everything's going to be on chain. Yes, we mean everything. Um, and when you pair that with, okay, they made this discord. I wonder if. Uh, they're going to be in, trying to incorporate its Aditya's uh, Cordify in there to just automatically repost onto chain everything that gets said in the Discord uh, to that's kind that's of... That's a good point, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, maybe he's got some information. We might have to shake it out of him. We'll see. He was one of the, he was one of the early people on, uh, on the Discord, actually. Uh, right. And he was, he was actually posting, I think, in the, uh, in the alpha testing folder. So maybe you're onto something. Yeah, that was, that was a good that was a good observation. Uh, so also, um, community feeds are going to be under each DAO. So you're going to be able to make posts under the DAO, like take part in this discussion. And next to each username that's making these posts, it's going to say how much they contributed to that DAO. So like, say I buy a thousand dollars worth of MP3 DAO, and I make a post under MP3 DAO. Next, to my name is going to say Krasenstein contributed a thousand dollars. So you're going to be able to see who has who's invested like when somebody makes a comment you're going to know how much they have invested into that DAO. how much how many coins do they own of that DAO? uh there's going to be one click distribution of funds to DAO coin holders so let's say you we you know we create a DAO to um buy a yacht because we think we're going to be able to sell it for more and we end up selling it for more we can distribute those profits to all DAO coin holders with one click which is awesome uh the, so DAO DAO actually gives several examples of DAOs that it appears that whoever's behind DAO DAO, I believe it's the core team, will actually be creating these DAOs too. And number one was Pokey DAO. And this is a really cool one. The idea behind this DAO is that they're going to buy the legendary Charizard collection. I think it's on eBay by King Pokemon. And it's currently going for $21 million. So the idea is that they're going to raise $21 million through DAO DAO. For, through PokéDAO, I guess I should say, they're going to use that $21 million to buy this Charizard collection. Then they're going to burn all of the cards and make NFTs for each one and then sell those NFTs and then distribute the profits, distribute 
I guess not just the profits, all of the money back to the Dow holders. I, I guess ultimately it would come down to what the Dow holders want to do through a vote. But right now that's the idea of Pokey Dow. There's also a Dow Combinator. I assume that's going to be like a Y Combinator where you know you can invest in this Dow and then a Dow is going to invest into startups, maybe DSO startups. Uh, there's also a Takeover Dow. No details of that were given. Um, probably take over something. Maybe you're going to take over a company or something. Uh, there's McDonald's, like McDonald's, but McDonald's, no information about that either. There's Morty Dow, like Rick and Morty. And the idea behind this one is to create additional seasons of Rick and Morty, but they'll be directed by the Dow. So <laughs> if you own Dow tokens, you're going to get to decide what, what these episodes are like. So I think that's really cool too. What do you guys think of these ideas? What do you guys I, think of the, uh, of, of, the, of the name choices there and the examples they decided to use? Kind of interesting, huh? Well, I, I think these are, the way they're outlined on the website is that these are actually legitimate DAOs that are going to be created. So, yeah, I, you know, like, like that, this goes back to my original point. Like one of the, if one of these DAOs was to take off, like if, say, say they were able to raise 11 million or whatever it 21 is, million. $21 million for the Pokey DAO and actually buy this collection and burn it and mint it as an NFT on the DSO blockchain. Like, do you know how much media attention that would get to be? So if one of these was to actually happen, things would just go insane. And then when you burn, and, uh, when you burn $21 million worth of Pokemon. Right. Like, like, I mean, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be on like, like CNN. <laughs> this is going to be a story on CNN. And I, I think that's the power. Yeah. Well, yeah what, what do you think? mp3 i think that's a great point uh i actually speaking of the pokemon card thing i did just see an example uh not too long ago like within the last couple of days where someone was doing something similar with a magic the gathering card uh i don't know if you guys saw that but they're basically yeah, saying the same thing they have this super ultra rare uh magic the gathering card if you're familiar with the game it's very similar to pokemon and uh it's it's a trading card game and their idea is they're going to create this i don't know if it's a DAO, but they're going to create this uh, situation where they're going to burn the card and create an NFT version of it. And there's, it, there's some debate around it, right? Because it's like, it's interesting, the whole concept. And it's a new idea, obviously, because before NFTs, I mean, you destroy the card, the card's gone, yeah. you know? So it's like, some people were really interested in it, in it. I saw some controversy where some people were like, just because you burn the card doesn't mean this NFT example resembles it and then some people were like even taking it to like a philosophical artistry level of like right only, only the person who created the art can destroy the art and like has that so it was really interesting to see some of that and i think you know as we move forward in this web3 space and we see these ideas play out um it's almost like one of those things where all paths are eventually going to get taken and we're going to see some uh interesting conflict and and ideas pop up around some of these use cases and it's going to be interesting because in this Web3 space, it's like we're we're giving people the ability, uh, enabling them to do anything they want to do. So we're going to see some things that are like really off the wall, you know, and I think that's one of them is like this idea of like buying this crazy expensive Charizard card and then like burning it or whatever. Me personally, I'm super into trading card games. Um, I actually have a Yu-Gi-Oh card that I had since I was like 10 or something that I pulled from the pack and I threw it in a case and oh, wow. now it's worth, it's worth some money. Uh, I'm not sure how much because I need to get it graded and authenticated, but it's definitely worth some money and I'm excited, but it's interesting because right now with COVID, the only way to like get that graded and authenticated is to like mail it in. And because it's worth so much, it's like, oh, I don't want to yeah. send this in the mail. <laughs> so I've kind of just been waiting and waiting. And I think it's a good idea. It's kind of like the diamond hands for this, card and it's like i i think about it i'm like well i've been diamond handing it since 10 so what's a couple more months to see if they reopen for walk-ins you know exactly and i'm not really pressed for the money right now too so it's like i don't know i i get it though i get that like uh i get the hype around these cards because they're almost like real life nfts right like they're the nfts yeah, before the NFTs. original nfts yeah. yeah so so speaking of nfts so dow dow created these nfts and I, there's a gold one it's a, called the golden ticket, the silver ticket, and the bronze ticket. The gold ticket, I believe, cost, what is it, Brian? $100,000, $100, approximately 2,500 uh, DSO, I think it is. And then there's a silver ticket, which is $1,000, and a bronze ticket, which is, what, about $100? $100, $100. So, 
So all the coins are going to be distributed at launch. If you buy these NFTs, you're going to get these coins. You're not going to have to pay the 10% fee if you, if you were to just buy the coins directly. So the NFTs, you get, it means you get Dow Dow coins for 10% less than you'll be paying if you buy the coin directly. But once, once Dow Dow launches, for a few weeks, you're going to be able to buy the Dow, Dow coins if you haven't already bought them through the NFTs. And then they're going to shut off contributions altogether, and that's going to set who the owner of the Dow coins are. So there's going to be a limited time that you can actually get these, even more limited through the NFTs at a better rate. Uh, so there's that. I, I think, you know, I think most people are going to wait until 14 confirms this is them before they buy the Dow Dow coins. But I expect a lot of these are going to sell. It's going to be interesting to see if any of the gold ones sell. Well, and, and then Absolutely. what they're... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, especially since there doesn't seem to be any benefit to like the serial number, like whether I have number one or if I have number 999, you know? Yeah. Uh, I did want to say too, like, what do you guys think of those price points? Because it's interesting to see a hundred, a thousand, and then you would think the next one would be 10,000, but no, it's up to a hundred thousand. So it's like, I, and we don't really know and have confirmation of these rewards that come with this. So exactly. It almost feels like DSO to do that and kind of just like, uh, you know, allow the brave and the, and the, those who have courage to like take this risk to kind of get in early. Uh, I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. And, and I think the, I, I think what happens after these sell and after they raise the funding for the Dow, 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 uh, I think that's, what's going to be exciting and exciting to watch because once they bring it, say they bring in a million dollars selling these, selling the, these NFTs as well as just selling the coin by itself, they then take that million dollars and those who own that Dow coin get to vote on how they're going to run the Dow Dow Dow. Yeah. And that's going to be major decisions, how you're going to make it profitable. How, how can you profit? How can you make Dow Dow profitable so that then the users that bought the Dow coin get a reward? There's going to be all kinds of like interesting ways to interact with it. And I, I think that I think it's going to be the first example, but I think there's going to be even cooler examples coming down the line as people come up with creative ways to launch a DAO. You know, I, I love how it's not on Discord. Like it's just all, everything takes place on DSL, which I think is really awesome. But let, let's, let's move on enough with DAO DAO. I think we, we're, all, we're all pretty excited about that. Just going to touch on a few other things before we get to MP3 and what he's doing. Uh, yesterday, Raj Lahodi returned. Uh, he, he had been gone for several weeks. He tells the community that he's got become active on OpenSea and has been trading Ethereum NFTs. He said some people were mad with him doing it. Uh, he feels this is great and that he thinks it's a great place to talk about NFTs on ETH. And I, I agree. I, I think we all kind of miss Raj uh, in his absence. And I, I think DSO is a great place to talk about NFTs, whether they're on DSO, Solana, Ethereum, wherever else. Yeah. And, and I think this goes back to what I was saying the other day about DSO having this ability to bring people back because you want to check to see if you earned any diamonds, if you anybody bought your creator coin, how much DSO you have, how much it's valued at. So like, like Raj left, he'll be back. He'll, he might leave again, but he, he'll be back. And that's what's so great. I think a lot of these early people that came on maybe like six or seven or eight months ago, I think they're going to be back, especially once these new features and new nodes start rolling out. For sure. And Overclout yesterday added some new things to their, I guess they're not really out yet, but to what's going to come. Yeah. So they're, they, like I mentioned before, they're going to have this trending sidebar, uh, kind of like how diamond app shows like the top diamond creators, the top creator coin buys and, and whatnot. But, uh, they've added uh, four new sidebar lists. Uh, one includes who's online. So you can see who's online right now. Uh, which is, I think that's pretty valuable. You can see who's, you can do that on Open Prosper, but this is like the same thing. You can see who's right now online on DSO. Uh, you can see the top NFT royalties of the day, so who earned the most royalties, which is a unique way of looking at the NFT space. Uh, you can see who commented the most on the day, in the last day. So like, is MP3 commenting a lot in the last day? Let's engage with him because he's obviously really engaged today. Uh, you can see, also see the top diamond gifts gifters for the day. So is Dormesh giving away a lot of coin today? Uh, is he in this list? We'll see. Is Natter up there? And I, I think it's just different ways you look at real-time data. And I think that's important with DSO. 
Yeah, and also yesterday, uh, Tyne and Open Prosper had something. Yeah, so, so Tyne actually suggested to Salil um, to add a feature to reward, I guess, these, these nodes who are linking back to Open Prosper's hashtag hashtag page. So has, they, uh, as you know, Open Prosper launched hashtags about a week and a half ago or so. So if your node, say you're running the social world and you link back to, you link to the Open Prosper hashtag page, you can make it so that now anybody that clicks a link on that page that went there gets back to the social world because there's a, there's links underneath each of the uh, each of the posts for the hashtags. So it's a cool way to like reward those who are linking back to Open Prosper. Uh, I think it's a great idea because it's it's bringing these nodes together and making them work together and benefit from each other's success. So great job, Tyne, on suggesting this, and of course, Salil for uh, implementing this feature. Yeah, for sure. So community events today at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Chime In, Darien Parish, Crypto Talks. Uh, that's a little bit before this video is posted, but Darien's awesome. His Crypto Talks are great on Chime In. Definitely check those out if you haven't already. At 12 p.m. Eastern time on Clubhouse is IT Clubhouse Decibel DSO. Altum Base and Tundop Place. It's a Russian language room we talk about every day. With Siva, Fankor, Sim, Sima, Simak, Ilya, Fedorovic, and Mashalin. And then at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Chime In is a DSO community hangout with Alex Valaitis. So it's going to be an interesting hangout tonight with Dow Dow. Um, I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions, lots of answers. We'll probably get a better clarification about everything with Dow Dow tonight at 7.30 Eastern Time on Chime In. But let, let's now get to MP3. And I, I know you've been a DSO OG. You've probably been here as long as us, if not longer. And we had a chance to meet you in Miami several months back. And you start have launched Name Trade, which is a DSO username trading service. You want to talk a little bit about what you're doing? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, obviously we met uh, for the first time in Miami. And actually around that time, uh, even before then, I've been working on name trade since May. Uh, wow. So let's see. That. Yeah, it's probably like 10 months, nine months, something like that. Um, and the interesting thing is, you know, I've always kind of been uh, into usernames. I don't know why, but I just think it's like a really cool concept of uh, this online identity that people can use and you can pick whatever you want. You know, it's this cool thing. And then DSO just brings a whole nother level to it. And it's interesting because, you know, as I'm kind of watching this thing, I'm realizing, you know, this has a potential to, for people to exchange these usernames and trade these usernames and buy and sell them in a way that's never been available on any other social media, really. Um, and, I, and I've and i taken, you know, this past year to study pretty much every username type exchange and including like gamer tags and stuff like that uh, for Xbox and things like that. Just any type of these like identity trading type things. And the interesting thing is most of the services that have existed are like underground. They're like black markets, like escrow services and things like that. So it's really interesting to see because, you know, Facebook, Twitter, all these, uh, Instagram, it's all walled gardens. It's all private data, right? So it's like, there's no real way to, you don't really own that name. Um, so with DSO, it's like you, you do own the name to a certain degree, even though the usernames themselves aren't locked to the accounts uh, and there's pros and cons to that. It, it does, I noticed right away, as soon as I was like, oh, this username is a direct link to someone's wallet. Like this is super important. You know, this is something that people are gonna be using and, and that's how people tag you and that's how people know you. And it's, and you see like with projects, uh, that's the name and the brand. So instantly I was like, okay, how can we do this? And my first thought, this was in the early days was I just created almost like a, a Craigslist style website where I would just throw up the names and I kind of tried to go with like this escrow-ish service at first. Um, but it was just kind of messy and tricky because I didn't want to mess with people's accounts or their seed phrases or anything like that. And I really wanted to embrace the uh, theme of DSO of like, no, this there's a way to do this that nobody should have to give me their account information or give me over uh, control or uh, possession of this thing that they're trying to sell like a username right and so we kept trying to figure it out and we hit some roadblocks I had some help from time early on uh, Paul Burke kind of gave me some advice early on and uh, you know we finally got a break when derived keys kind of came around and rolled out 
Um, shout out Pete Turn. You know, he's been doing such a great job for the team. And that really enabled us to be able to streamline the service and really do it in a way that makes sense. And we're really excited for these uh, derived key limits that are going to be coming out. We're going to be incorporating them. So it's really just become this thing that was, it was like uh, timing met with preparation of like perfect timing. And I think we were actually the, the second project or whatever you want to call it, really anybody to incorporate derived keys. I think clout feed was like right before us a couple of days before us. so it's been something we've been working on for a long time and i'm really excited i actually was gonna uh use this as an opportunity to debut it but there's a couple little changes we need to make today so i'm actually gonna make uh if everything goes right i'm gonna make name trade publicly available tomorrow awesome nice. um, yeah sometime during the day what i'll do is i'll just uh you know if you're watching this just go and follow name trade account and look for a post i'm gonna make a post directly from that account and that'll include the uh, the private password to get in. And eventually the password will come down. I want to keep it up at first, just to in case anything goes wrong, I can easily uh, change the password or whatever. But right. we've been doing testing um, for a long time now. And we've, I like you know, I gave the password out to uh, a select group of people that I trust, like you guys and a couple other people who really know what they were doing and are familiar with identity and the usernames. And just to play around, try to find some bugs. And there were some things where we found we could improve. Uh, so the overall goal is just to provide a safe uh, and effective way for people to trade usernames, right? Because that doesn't exist. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, love how it's, I love how the service and you don't have to worry about like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this account. And when I close it, you, you take the name real fast and hope nobody grabs it in between somebody's filing. I love how it just, it, it, it's an easy flow. Everything just flows. You don't have to worry about like the possibility of losing that name. So I, I think you really solved that problem. And I, Brian and I were domain name traders for such a long time. And I, I do see DSO usernames becoming like a future domain name type thing. So I, I think it's a great idea. I think you're out in front of everything. And, you know, I can't wait to see the launch I, tomorrow. I'm excited about that. Yeah. yeah. And, and I had a question. Like, I'm, I'm sure you've been paying attention to like that, that one person or maybe multiple people buying up a bunch of uh, short letter numbered uh, usernames. Like, like, what are your thoughts on that? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Are you agnostic to it? Uh, to be honest, I'm a bit agnostic to it because obviously people thought it was me at first because it's like this timing of like, hey, this guy's trying to launch, launch a name selling service. All of a sudden, this person comes along with bot and buys thousands of names. And I totally get why people thought it was me. Um, and to be honest with you guys, I did think about using some type of script or something to get names. Um, I've had that idea for a while. And I've always been into the usernames myself. I mean, I've been reserving names manually since BitClub launched, just yeah. whenever I find a cool so name. We have, we have like probably like 50 names that we reserve back. In yeah. And why, why would you not when it is so cheap to do so and there's no subscription fee, right? Um, it's almost like domains, but more niche and better because there's not this reoccurring fee. Um, and you kind of, obviously identity swap exists, but it's like, Natter's kind of come out and spoke about how he's not going to use that uh, against these type of people that reserve the name. So to bring it up to speed, um, I, did, I didn't know how to feel about it at first because nobody knew like to the level this person was going to take it. I have my guesses of who it is. Obviously, it's not me. Um, obviously, you kind of just have to take my word for that because there's no real way to figure out who it was. Yeah, but yeah. I have my hunches of who I think it could be. Uh, I think it's somebody who has been around for a while and it's probably within the OG group, probably somebody we know. Because one, they have to have been around a while to kind of see the value in doing something like that. I mean, typically if we see someone come on and trying to like do these weird moves, it's like with other stuff, like they're trying to like pretend to be like an IG model or they're trying to like do these, you know, it's kind of niche for someone to be like, hmm, I'm gonna make a bot and take thousands of usernames and spend five cents each and not be able to sell them because the service hasn't launched yet to sell them. So it's like, they're making a bet they're kind of someone who, by doing this, shows that they believe in DSO and that they think these names are going to be worse. Yeah, some that's how. Yeah, for sure. And and which would ensure they think that it's going to be successful. They're right? probably like going to be your largest customer too. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. And I and I thought about that too, as far as like if they come to try to list the names, uh, I think I'm going to let them um, because this is kind of how I feel about it. Look, DSO is an open source protocol, and I kind of did warn about this a while ago that it's like, you know, when you have open source, this person who did this, they weren't exactly breaking any rules. Um, 
there's no limit to how many usernames you can have. There's no limit to uh, what you can do as far as writing a script, you know, and it's almost welcomed in this open source environment. So it's like, it was really only a matter of time. So someone did something like that. And I think it's kind of good that it happened because one, it shows maybe an area of improvement or like a concern that we might have. Uh, thank God something like that happened before mass adoption, right? Or whatever. So it's like, it kind of gives us a heads up, like, hey, this is the thing. This is potentially like a thing that someone could do. And if they had enough funds, it could cause some trouble. For me, the main reason I didn't do it is because ultimately at the end of the day, when I think about it, it would create direct competition with my own customers. The purpose of my service is for people to be able to buy and sell names and I make a commission off of sales. If I flood the market with all those names nobody yeah. else is really going to be able to sell names and it's like nobody's going to use my service you know so right. it's like i really hope that's not the case where this person just comes and tries to load up on these names but in a way I, if you think about it it's good that my service is going to exist because now there's a way at least for those names to be transferred instead of right. all these usernames i mean think about all the good usernames that people have just like walked away from or they're on an account where yeah, you know they're not that active anymore it provides a way for these uh, these usernames to not get landlocked and i think that's like a super undervalued aspect of this is like you know yeah there's so many usernames but like they are finite though just like the DSO itself and it's important to have that liquidity of them being able to flow in and out of different hands you know in my opinion. yeah and and natter like a pin gave his opinion on this as well and, and he said look look we could have maybe raised the price to register our username maybe based on the number of letters or number number of numbers uh and we could have taken in that revenue to the diso foundation or we could just let it be free and open and let this individual uh register these usernames and sell them himself or herself and capture that that revenue instead of us capturing the revenue. So I, I think like I, I, I'm I'm agnostic as well. I, I think I'm in the same boat as you. I, I think that anything that's open like this, anything that's decentralized, you're gonna have people abusing it if you want to call it abusing it. Uh, but I think that's built into it, and and it's something that people just have to realize is happening. And, and maybe one solution which I mentioned before is that maybe you can kind of have another field. For, for a username and then maybe a screen name. So that even if you register, maybe maybe somebody else wants to call themselves MP3, but they want, they obviously the username's not available, they'll get MP3 account or something. And then they can still display, their display name, I think that would be a better word, could be MP3. So that they can still go by the name that they're, they usually go by on other social media platforms, but their username might not be the same. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's funny because Brian and I were actually banned from Twitter, and the reason they gave was that we bought our account, and we never bought our account, but that was the, like, that's why we were banned. We lost 1.6 million followers because we supposedly bought our account, which we never did, and we even had proof to show that we signed, registered this account. We have the original emails and everything, and after we showed it to them, they are like, oh, too bad, sorry. So, yeah, like... I, I love DSO and I love it for the open source and the, you know, the ability. It's kind of like the wild, wild west. People are going to learn. There's going to become norms that are, you know, adopted and things are going to be changed at the protocol level and the node level. But yeah, it was, I, I think I love name trade. I love the idea. I think it's going to be a success, especially because you're the first one doing it. And I think in the future, people are going to want to buy different identities. So great job. Yeah, I think it's I think it's going to increase with popularity as DSO increases popularity. And I'm, I really feel good about that position. Um, I believe in DSO. I think that it's going to succeed. I think that it's a matter of if not when, um, you know, who knows how long that's going to take and when, when not exactly. if, when not if, right? Exactly. Exactly. And not uh, to say like, it could take some time, you know, it's like, I, I don't know, but I'm here for it and I'm going to be here for it. And I'm glad that I was able to have this time and the timing to build this service. And I'm just really excited to see how it goes. You know, um, I, the whole goal behind it was to make it a service that was as close to peer to peer as possible and kind of followed this, uh, theme of decentralization and kind of just not getting in the way of users and giving the users control. And I tried to make it, um, super easy and simple just a few clicks boom 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 your name's listed a few clicks and names bought it's clean everything happens and it's 
And it's really easy. The, the concept of it is that we're really just providing um, the service itself. We're not really like overseeing any of the transactions. I mean, obviously there's admin privileges and things like that, that I can do, like go take names off the list and clear it if I need to. But for the most part, it's like, I'm not mitigating these trades. I'm literally just giving the community this thing and saying, look, anybody can, I, to be honest, I won't even know who everyone trading is. Obviously uh, that information is public information on the blockchain, yeah. but like if people are selling names from anonymous accounts and stuff, I mean, it's anyone's guess who that is. I don't know. And I don't really, here's the interesting thing is I've kind of talked to people about it. The good thing about my service is like, look, we just deal with usernames. Um, and I think that's great because it's like, nobody's coming on our thing posting, nobody's on there like doing stuff. So it's like, there's no real, the only thing people can do is just buy and sell a username. Right. You know, like how much can they really manipulate the service? You know, and I've spent months, uh, I'm really good at breaking things. So my whole goal here has been trying to uh, sabotage my own project. And it's really given me a good perspective on some of the potential dangers and things. And we've been able to, really deal with it up front and have preventative tactics. I don't want to go into too much of what those are, but we have put a lot of thought and energy and time into making the service as safe as possible and designing in a way that gives the user control. Um, users will be able to add any name to the list. Uh, you literally just go to name-trade.com. Uh, that's name hyphen trade.com. And you just sign in through identity, uh, list a username. You don't pay any money to list the name. Anybody can go on there and list the name for any price they want. Uh, again, we're not gonna restrict people on that. Uh, it may need to fluctuate with like the parameters as time goes on. Like let's say people are kind of abusing that and listing a bunch of names for 999,000 D. So we'll see. I don't wanna put limits yet because I don't like limiting people if I don't have to. And then uh, at the same time, you know, a user can just go on there and easily buy within just a few clicks and, and everything's copacetic. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited to provide this service and it's gonna be interesting to see I think it's going to be hot. Um, I, I don't know how popular it will be at first, especially kind of with the level we're at as far as DAU and stuff like that. But I do think it's it has the potential to become a staple as far as like a service in the community. Yeah. Um, and I'm also open to like integration. Um, I've actually been just a little bit of alpha, but there have been conversations with CloutFeed about possibly integrating. Um, you guys saw I did that thing with Asai the other day where I sold them the name. So there's there's kind of these deals that I'm working out with people and talking about um, because the goal here is I don't want to create a monopoly. I want this to be something that people actually use and is a tool that the community can benefit from, right? Like my goal here isn't just to run up a bunch of money and cash out. Um, I try to keep the fees relatively low and just make everything simple and easy to use. Yeah, we appreciate that. But yes. Yeah. Thanks so much for uh, coming on our show. And, you know, I know we had a lot to talk about. So you're talking about name trade and stuff kind of got moved to, to the back. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for name trade launching tomorrow. And I'm going to be keeping an eye out for it. I, I had a chance to test it out a little bit. And I, I love what you're yeah. doing. But yeah, thanks yeah. again, MP3, for coming on the show. And we'll see you next month in LA. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to you guys. Thank you so much for the opportunity and just for being awesome dudes. I did want to thank you just... Uh, what you guys do, man, uh, you guys are staple in the community. And I had the pleasure of kind of my first interactions with you were in those early days on Clubhouse in those rooms. And, you know, I really admired just how respectful and, and level headed you guys are with this stuff. You know, it's, you're not moon boys. Like you don't just jump on bandwagons. You, you come with a, a fresh perspective and a level head on a lot of these things. And I think that's a, a, a sober dose of reality there for a lot of people in DSO is you're not just riding the hype, you, you bring that value consistently and uh it's been cool just to see you guys build up to the point where you're at and i'm really excited to see moving into the future how the way you guys have positioned yourself what kind of opportunities not open for just you but everybody that you've been in touch with because you guys are so sharing and so willing to give opportunities and, and spotlight people so thank you for doing that and thank you for being a part of our community man thanks man. Yeah, thank thank uh, you yeah and we will talk to everyone tomorrow see ya